and I'm screaming, running for my life, butt naked, as fast as I can. It was the craziest experience of my life. And that's the last time I've been to a Payless Shoes. Yeah. Oh, did you know that if you shuffle a deck of cards properly, that order has likely never been seen in the history of the universe? Wow. Yeah. Did you know that you have 52 cards to pick up? Welcome to Smosh Lab! This episode is really exciting. We got the squad here, minus Keith. Uh, he hates science. I think we all know that. <laughs> it's really exciting because we have a new guest scientist. It's Derek from Veritasium. <laughs> Woo! Bam! Yes, uh, Derek. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I've been making a YouTube channel about science for nearly seven years now. Dude. It's called Veritasium, so mm. check it out when you get a chance. Go, do it. How do you know so much about science? I did a PhD in physics. Okay, yeah. that, that, that'll do it. Yeah. That'll, that'll do it. And an undergrad in engineering physics, and I, I taught uh, physics at a university, and I also taught uh, at high school level, so. Wow, that's very impressive. A lot uh, of experience, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, I have a recurring role on the Goldbergs, so that's <laughs> what I'm doing. That's, that's, that, is the, that is my peak. He shoots and scores with the ladies. Ow! That's, uh, that's pretty great. It's okay, it's okay. It's not physics though. But here you are hosting Smosh Lab, so yeah. you must be learning I a lot. I am pretending to be a scientist. I am hoping I will <laughs> pretend my way to knowledge. The first thing you gotta do is just really like test yourself and, and, right. see, and see your I innocence. thought you were about to hit me with that. No, come on out. <laughs> I got this cane here, and I want you to guess where the center of mass is, okay? okay? So what I want you to do is basically put your two fingers together like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna hold this out for you, and you get to pick the center of mass. Okay, well, all right, all uh, right. Are you confident? No, but I don't know if I'm ever confident. Uh, there? No. I was close. You were close. I had it for a second. You were close. No, okay. why don't you come on out? Okay, oh, yeah. we all try? Go on, oh. go, D nail it. You're gonna, get, you're gonna give it a shot? Yeah, I'm just gonna learn by example and do the opposite of what do he did. It. You can't do it. You're gonna fail. I love how you guys have the teamwork no, here. No, right there? Yeah. That, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is not the, uh, the center mass of the cane, but that was pretty okay. good. I wanna teach you a little trick. So here's what I want you to do. Start with your hands kind of far out like this. Yeah, with your fingers just pointing like that. Okay, <laughs> like so you're leaving a party let's, let's and you're try, just like, let's ah. try down there. Yeah, exactly. Hey guys. <laughs> now here's what I want you to do. Just basically move your fingers in like this. You can move both of them. Just keep moving them. Just keep moving them till they're right together. Hey! What? That's right. No! That's right. I did it. Where are you gonna start? Uh, wherever oh, she you, stopped. You, you, you're not gonna. You just wanna guess? There's a method to actually nail it, and you're just like, no, I was gonna win. <laughs> no, but she's, she said it was right here, so I'm Okay, wanna... let's see, okay. let's see. Get it, get it right. Maybe it's Are not you gonna get it? Method. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try the scientific the method. method, all right? You can put your hands anywhere you want, and you can move them as fast as you like. And you will always. This, my right end hand up. is not working. Well, it's not moving, but that doesn't mean it's not working. Oh, whoa, look at this. Whoa! This is the beauty of it, right? Because if you're slightly off balance, right? If I, if I have one hand that's closer to the center of mass, the friction is, is higher here, and so my other hand will move until they're about even, at which point now this one starts to move in a little bit, and no matter how you do it, you always end up immediately under the center of mass. Obviously. It's about that, that, that's the physics for you. It's about the friction. Yeah. Let me take out some practical real world uh, equipment here. Uh, we all have uh, phones on us, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The thing that I wanted okay. to show you was that there's a way to flip a phone so it'll flip nicely. And yeah. that is sideways. Yeah, sideways. If you flip it sideways, it just it just flips beautifully. But try yeah. to flip it this way, end over end, and you can't do it. Not even a single flip. It always does a weird. It does a weird rotation in the middle. I feel like I know the technique. Do you want to try it? Come, is come it on slower? out and, and give it a shot. No. Oh, it does do it. Never mind. Because I always do it where I push down with my do, thumb. Do it. Do it. 
I like that scale. The problem relates to a, a fundamental kind of theorem of physics, which is hard to describe, but easy to demonstrate, say, with a tennis racket, which is that there's different ways that you can spin an object, normally around three axes. So like this is one axis that you could spin this tennis racket around. Okay. And this takes a lot of effort because you're spinning all the mass in, uh, and it all has to go quite far. Yeah. Another way you could spin it is like this, where this is kind of easier because you're spinning around this uh, axis, so the mass is not as far away from yeah. the axis that we're spinning about. I'm talking about what's called the moment of inertia. This is a low moment of inertia to do, to do these kind of spins. This, I'm about to do the high moment of inertia, okay? It's a lot of inertia. But what you notice about both of these spins is that they're beautiful. So if you have the most moment of inertia or the least moment of inertia, it's all fine. Yeah. The intermediate moment of inertia, which is flipping it like this, that one is trouble. Oh no. Unbelievable. What? Ah! Did you see that? I couldn't I couldn't flip it. You, you try to Let's see. Give it a, give it a shot. Do you see how it also rotates this way yeah, as it's, it's flipping it's that way? It's way more messy. It's like, always doing that side rotation. See that one's way perfect. Prettier. That one's perfect. It's like when baseball players do that crazy thing with the baseball bat and they flip it and it stays like right in place. So this is called the intermediate axis theorem. It's the intermediate axis. <laughs> and I just and cannot seem it. to catch it. You lose it. It is the intermediate axis that is, that is the problem. There's actually a demonstration of this on the space station where they spun this little screw out of a hole and it comes out and it spins one way and then it spins the other direction and then it spins back this. And it, you look at it and you're like, why is it doing that? And it's the inherent instability of the intermediate axis. The physics of it is basically the same as the physics of trying to balance a pencil on its tip, which is that it's the kind of thing where any tiny little bump or anything causes it to immediately <laughs> But I wanna throw this to all the people out there who are watching, you know, just try to flip your phone, try to get that one time. People have claimed that they've done it, but video or it never happened. Yeah, send <laughs> us video of you doing it perfectly and I'll send you one American dollar. <laughs> I will, I'll do it. Totally it worth has it. has to be real. Yeah, the bragging rights. And uh, good luck filming that uh, when your phone is your camera. So, <laughs> you know. Good luck. It's, it's difficult. Let's jump to another one. Let's Courtney, do, do you want to join me over here? Okay, so uh, what do we got here? Cheerios. Do you want to try it? <laughs> <laughs> are you hungry? I'm a big fan of Cheerios. These are honey nut. I see the honey. All right, calm down. So we can kind of pretend that this is like your cereal bowl, except Way too, much, <laughs> way too much water. That just helps us see what's going on there. So I've, I've chucked a Cheerio in the bowl and here I have some magnets. And what I'm gonna do is bring the magnets uh, close to the Cheerio. My question is, what do you think is gonna happen? I have no idea. Is it gonna pull the Cheerio or is it? Is it going to react? It's got, it's got iron in the in the cereal, right? So is it'll stuff going to come out? Magnetic. Everybody knows yeah, yeah, Cheerios yeah. are mostly metal. Are Cheerios mostly metal? Whoa! Why are Cheerios magnetic? Uh, cholesterol? Uh, Cholesterol's not magnetic. Maybe there's iron in there. Maybe there's iron in there. Is there, there's probably what? And yeah. magnesium. There may also be magnesium in there. Noah, do you know the right answer? I'm guessing that we would just add in a specific amount of trace minerals to feed ourselves better. And he is 100% correct. It's because he has glasses. Wait, Noah, Noah's nailed it. So the point is you need a certain amount of iron in your diet and let's say maybe you're not eating a lot of red meat or green leafy vegetables. You might wanna just fortify the foods with some minerals. So they add the iron into these Cheerios because they know kids are gonna be eating it and they wanna make sure kids get enough iron in their diet. What's nice is uh, how concentrated the amount of iron is in Cheerios. So we're talking about 62 milligrams per serving. I wanna just kinda dangle this, get it, get it so it's kinda still which okay. might take us a second, and then see if you can attract it with that magnet. Uh, I've never done this before, so I, I have no idea whether this is gonna work. Oh, oh my gosh. Whoa. 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 Yeah, magnets! Oh! I want you to tell me, is this little piece of plastic magnetic? Do you wanna, uh, do you wanna hold it? No, it's not magnetic. You can hold it. I mean, sniffing is not gonna be the best way of knowing. You've got a magnet with you, you can use it. Yeah. So the, the question I have for you is, is that piece of plastic nope. magnetic? Now, it's not reacting. let us place this tiny little piece of plastic, which we've all agreed is not magnetic, 
into the bowl. Okay. Yeah. What's gonna happen when you bring the magnet close? All right. Pull it, pull it. It's gonna be magnetic. Oh, oh, it's oh, it's it's going away from it. It doesn't like it. It repels. <laughs> it is not about it. It's right definitely way. magnetic. It is. Yes. Is it though? It's, we have to be it's careful. Going... I mean, it, it's subtle. It's difficult mm -hmm. to do, but it's clearly there, right? It's definitely happening. Amazing. I'm not I'm not messing with you guys. So what's happening? Okay, so I think if there is just the tracest amount, we have eliminated any other pull in any other direction. So if it was on a flat surface, it would be being pulled downward because of the small amount of gravity. So because of that, the magnet will pull even the smallest amount of metal or iron? Or just, just in response to that, I will tell you there is no metal, there's nothing magnetic about the plastic. Then yeah. I, am, I give up. He gave us the hint earlier and he's a teacher. He said be careful with the, with the word magnetic. So he's about to teach us vocab we don't know, which is some sort of material that behaves magnetically but isn't actually magnetic. It needs a magnet or something to like make it I'm very impressed by Noah. No, I'm I am very you impressed. Like this guy. guy. You're two, he, he no. You're two for two. He's good at teaching. He has switched on today. All substances in very strong magnetic fields can kind of start to behave magnetic. So what's happening in this case is the water. So the wire, water is diamagnetic, which basically means if I bring a magnet close to it, it actually gets repelled and the water drops a little bit. And then the little bit of plastic uh, flows into that little valley. Wow. So the plastic isn't reacting at all. The plastic uh -uh. is not really reacting here. It's the water that has uh, the effect. Cool. What I'm looking for is the driest, cleanest hair that we I, have. My hair is still damp. Like, like it's, it's freshly showered this morning. Okay, can you run that comb through your hair uh, a bunch of times? Yeah, are we, are we staticking oils. that up? Oh what my is he gosh, magnets. <laughs> A whole yeah. magnet comes out of her hair, and we're like, what? Okay, so what I'm trying to do is get some of your electrons onto the comb, and then Shane, I might try to steal electrons from your hair as well, and you can rub that on your hair. Okay. On this floppy piece is probably good. Yeah, lots Ooh. of electrons there. Now I'm gonna see if what we've got from your hair can bend water, so are you guys ready? Just trying to get a nice stream of water coming out. Let's, let's try that. <laughs> okay, is it gonna bend? We might need a steadier stream. Let me try that, and let me try the balloon. Are you ready with it? Do it. All right, so we have to use the side that was actually touching your hair. Oh! Whoa! That's we definitely the color got of my hair. Yeah. Wow. We stole a lot of electrons from your hair, so now the balloon is negatively oh! charged, and it's pulling a whole bunch of water That's towards. Olivia's it. terrified. <laughs> Are you terrified, Olivia? No. Okay. <laughs> Can I do some? <laughs> Can I have some? Oh, let's all do it. <laughs> With the power of us combined, we bend water. Whoa. Wow. When you bring the negative charges here, they repel negative charges in the water sort of back into this tap and they keep them inside this water here. So basically when the water comes up, comes out and turns into droplets, there are more positive charges in the water than there are in just here, because this should really be neutral. There should be equal numbers okay. of positive and negative charges to so this. So basically, our electrons are pushing away all the bad vibes and only bringing in the good vibes. I feel like that's exactly the wrong way of looking at it, okay? <laughs> I've got one more thing for you. Right. Uh, it just involves getting a standard tea bag from your house. Take a little uh, snip across the top like that. We're not actually interested in the tea here, we're interested in the baggy part. But what's cool about this, right, is that it forms a, a little column. And now, I wanna light the top of it on fire. Of course. Love all, doing that. All good science demos. Whoa! Oh. Wow! Uh, oh. For science! Are you guys ready? Wow! Oh, no. <laughs> so heat rises, I got that fact right, correct? Well, why is that? Because it is less dense than cold. It's faster moving mode. Don't look at me, he's yes, the scientist. Yes, both of these I answers know, but are great. I you keep nailing it. <laughs> both both of these, faster moving mode. Yeah. Both, yeah. both of these answers are great. So the molecules start moving fast to get so energetic because of the fire. And yeah. because of that, they bump into each other more and they end up being more spread out. 
Uh -huh. Meaning the, they're less dense. Yes. And so once it's burned away, so much of it, there's like hardly any weight there, and the heat in it, right? Is it like the energy bounces off? Did I get it? Did I, yes. Is it also, yes, I got one. These tea bags are made of a material which is already pretty light. It is flammable. Once you get down to just the last tiny bit of it, it basically gets caught up in the convection current. So in the fact that you know there's all this fast moving molecule, less dense air, which is getting pushed up actually by the cooler air around it. You guys know the buoyancy principle? No. You, uh, I'm I don't. sure. Okay, so when something displaces a fluid, like, I don't know, this lighter, you chuck it in water, mm -hmm. it displaces a certain amount of water, and so there's an upward force on the lighter equal to the weight of water that it's displaced. Okay. So here, those fumes are taking up a certain amount of space, mm -hmm. so they're displacing air, so they are pushed upwards by a force equal to the weight of air that they're displacing. So the fact that they're less dense means that they are lighter than the force pushing them up, and that's why they move up. Nice. Whoa, it's whoa. so cute. Whoa. Whoa. So guys, that was uh, five physics phenomena. What did we learn today? We learned a lot. I learned that you can actually steal, or not steal, you can push electrons from water into the spout. That didn't make sense. But but I think I think you've nailed the essence of it, right? Yeah. That like charges repel and unlike charges attract and you can get that to happen with a stream of water and that's why it deflects. I learned that Noah picks up on science pretty quick. You should take over I didn't my have job. Any answers. Yeah, I, have I am not I am not doing a good job. Thank you guys and thank you Derek. Uh, you've been awesome. This was great. Yeah, uh, it's my pleasure. This was super cool. Uh, we'll definitely have you back. All right guys, uh, comment down below any other experiments you'd like to uh, see us do, any other realms of science we should touch on, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm so excited to be taking this journey into the world of science with all of you. Let us know if there's any other cool experiments you'd like to see us do. Science! I need to come up with a better catchphrase. <laughs>